I think we came up with a basic idea for the for the music, and then and Anthony wrote some stuff, and then I, I seem to remember him going to his house and writing some lyrics, and then driving back and and recorded the vocal. And we weren't even the demo was so good. We were considering even if the if the recording of the band didn't come out good, we would use that demo on the record. Yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that was around. That was in that break, and and then yeah, when 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 everything cleared and we were we were allowed to go in the studio, I guess we probably rehearsed for another month or two or something, and then and then moved into the mansion, which was another thing like to live in this house that was like again just a warm cozy feeling as opposed to a, a sterile you know professional feeling mm -hmm. we wouldn't have ever known that that was a possibility you know to us you had to go in a studio to record a, a song and you were just like no we could make one in and yeah, i don't know why i thought that either because i'd never done it before I, <laughs> like, I, I don't really know why it was a strange i think the thought was they had made these this group of albums. The, I didn't get the feeling that there was ever a great recording experience for the Chili Peppers, and they were all similar in that they all went into a corporate studio and recorded. What can we do to make this one the first one that's not like that? Right. And I would drive over Laurel Canyon all the time, and I loved that house. <laughs> and then I just tracked down the owner and asked if there was any way that we could rent it, and, and it worked out. We looked at other houses before that, and it wouldn't it wouldn't have been as good. That was a really special place. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, and we were so excited by stuff, just like hearing all that natural room sound on the snare and stuff. It's like, it's it's when I hear it today, it sounds really overblown, but it it was exciting, you know. It really like, was. Yeah, like and and it felt it was perfect for that record and how we had arranged the tunes because how even, sparse they were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It filled up the space whenever the guitar wasn't playing or the bass wasn't playing. Yeah. The drums, it almost sounded like you didn't need anything but drums to fill up the space. Everything else mm -hmm. sounded like extra. So, yeah, it was it was really magic. And I remember when we did the uh, the overdubs where everybody played percussion instruments. I remember when we recorded Up at Midnight behind the house outside. Do you yeah. remember? Hot to yeah. in the Red Hot. Yeah. We did good stuff. It was fun. And I remember Anthony was singing upstairs in one of the bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Flea was saying that that moment of recording the Robert Johnson song in the behind the house in the outside was, yeah. uh, it's like his favorite recording experience ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was some car drove on down Laurel Canyon. Uh, you could hear it was filled with girls and they screamed like right before <laughs> we started recording it. It was like, Wah! so cool. It just felt like that was right as we had pressed record and we would, it was just like, Oh yeah, that's the magic sound that's supposed to go right there. <laughs> you know, when you brought in the songs that didn't sound like previous Chili Pepper songs, what was the reaction from the band at first when you came to rehearsal with, let's say, Breaking the Girl music? Total openness, total excitement. Like, wow, right. that to me, it felt so easy to write something like that. It felt yeah. like I could have been doing that all along. I didn't know it, that it was going to be okay, you know? Yeah, because yeah, up until that point, what the Chili Peppers were was a very specific thing. It was hard funk with rap vocals, always. Yeah. Yeah, and on this album, that that mold got broken to just be good music, whatever the good music was. Yeah, and I hadn't realized how much those limitations that we were working in, as far as the the musical style. I think I thought of that as just as intentional. I didn't think of it as that they just weren't able to write something like Breaking the Girl or something. I thought specifically they didn't want to do that and. The more I got yeah. to know them, like on, on the Mother's Milk Tour, Anthony and I, we had a really nice drive in Germany at one time, just like we'd never listened to David Bowie together and we listened to Hunky Dory. We had, we had a cassette of it that a nice woman from EMI gave to us. And yeah, just seeing him feel that music so intensely. And so al along the way throughout the Mother's Milk Tour, I'm starting to put it together into my head that like, they would really like it if I wrote stuff like this. And in a lot of ways, it was the most natural thing that I could do. And I just, but it was also that not just, not just that there might've been an inability to write stuff like that before, but like 
like I really loved the band within those limitations. Like sure. I really like I that that funk punk sometimes heavy metal but really good version of heavy metal thing that they had like as a fan I thought it was such a brilliant combination of things that I didn't want to mess with it myself for purely artistic reasons. You know, I didn't and also you never know something till you've tried it and Absolutely. I didn't know how good we would sound playing something like Under the Bridge or I Could Have Lied Absolutely. like like we were saying like even with I Could Have Lied we had doubt as to whether it would even sound good with yeah. Chad and Flea playing on yeah. it you know? I can remember when we were putting songs on the album deciding that what's the song that ended up on the Conehead soundtrack Soul to Squeeze yeah it's like well that couldn't be on the album because it was like too mellow and we already had a mellow song. Like, you know, do you remember that? Yeah, and you really did your best to to convince us to put it on there. You were like, <laughs> I think it's one of the song. best songs. <laughs> you know? It's such a good and, song. And when we were writing this last batch of material that, that we wrote for these couple albums, uh, I listened to the whole album of, I listened to each of the whole albums at some point during the making of it just to see where we were at and what we yeah. might be missing. And, and when I listened to Blood Sugar particularly, I would... As you know, as great as it is and everything, I was just like, we were insane for not putting Soul to Squeeze on that record. Like, yeah. I remember clearly Fleas and Mice thinking of stuff. Of course. I remember us both particularly being like, yeah, it's no, too much. yeah, too <laughs> I much. We've, as yeah. it is, we've got three songs like this, and yeah. that's that's already way more than enough or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's just such a good song, though. <laughs> it's such a good song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you never know. Like, you really never know. And it's like, if the Ramones would have made an album like Hunky Dory, I don't know if we would have liked it. Do you know right. what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, you don't sometimes know. when the formula is good, or ACDC, you know, yeah. we there are bands that you want to sound like the way they sound. So in some ways, it was it was risky. Now, in retrospect, it worked out, but it was risky. The yeah. other thing that it did was there were already a handful of those albums so it did it wasn't like this was the band's second album of of their career yeah they had already mined those fields for some time yeah and it seemed like good timing to expand and we didn't expand like crazy it's still if you like the old band i don't think you would have not liked the new band it wasn't it wasn't like 180 degrees in the opposite direction it just was widening the the scope. Yeah, there definitely were people who didn't like us, like who turned on us at that point for, for sure, sure. When when Blood Sugar came out, like for sure. Yeah, there was definitely people that liked the the fast punk punk thing and and uh, felt that we were selling out or whatever. You know, yeah. I remember one interviewer came to the Blood Sugar house. 